In this video, I'll show you how you can make your own Necromunda tiles. Hello Bitsbury, this is Craig from Bitsbox.co.uk here, and in this video I'm going to show you how I make my own tiles for Necromunda. So at the time of recording this, the plastic tiles have just been out of stock, sort of almost since they first came out. Um, I only recently saw some in person, and um, they're, whilst they're pretty cool, um, they are quite restrictive on where you can put stuff, and obviously they're just completely flat. Now um, if you're watching this in the future, DW may have released some other styles, and they're probably in stock, and a bit easier to um, get hold of, but... Yeah, I thought I'd have a go at making my own ones, and um, I'm going to sort of try and make like the sump theme. So there's a lot of, um, sort of like a lot of sort of sludgy water and sewage and stuff like that, and then sort of the um, the town or the underhive is sort of all built around it. So it's going to have some more depth to it than just these flat panels. So um, yeah, if you want to just make yours a little bit more interesting or have something to go alongside the plastic ones, and um, just have a bit more sort of. Um, dimension to them, then yeah, um, this sort of tutorial just should hopefully be helpful. So yeah, um, before we begin, as always, just want to say a massive thank you and give a shout out to all of our Patreons, and um, thank you so much for supporting our channel, and if you want to know what our Patreon is all about, or you want to help support our channel, then please do feel free to click the link to our Patreon down below, and if you are new to this channel and like all things hobby related, then please do, do um, hit that subscribe button down below to keep up to date with all our videos. So yeah, I've rambled on long enough, let's hit the desk. Okay, so as I said in the intro, I'm going for a sort of sump city type base, which will be sort of, um, have more dimension to it. I don't want to say three, sort of three dimensional, because obviously everything's three dimensional, but instead of a flat thing, it's going to be slightly raised and there'll be um, essentially sort of like a water sewage area, sort of in the middle. And that's the plan, anyway. Um, I'm sort of filming this before I've sort of drawn out exactly what I'm going to do, but I'm going to just show you the stuff that, um, right now, that I am definitely 100% done. So, what I have here is a 3mm thick MDF sheet. Um, it's not exactly um, 1 foot by 1 foot, or 12 inches, 30 centimetres, what have you. Um, it's a slightly wider on one side, but you can buy perfectly square ones, and these are just what I happen to have. Um, I'll put a link in the description to an eBay listing that I've found for these, but if you search for like 3mm um, MDF square, then um, you should hopefully find some on eBay. Um, if not, if you're doing a more sort of three dimensional thing, you could probably get away with just, with just cork. Um, but I do prefer something a bit sturdier if you're just putting the tiles on top. So how are we going to do the tiles? That is the first thing we're going to look at in this video. So I'm going to take this one side and I'll show you how we do some tiles on top. Okay so there's many ways of making the tiles on top. Um, I've got an old piece of plastic card here. I'm not going to make it out of that. But um, you can have anything, old piece of card, um, even an old cut and mat is what I've used for some of the others. But essentially I'm going to sort of try and cast some and I'm using the, this Daz clay. Now, if you're familiar with this, um, you may know sort of its sort of advantages and disadvantages. Um, for what I'm doing here, it's sort of good enough. Um, I've actually made quite a few already before I've gone on video because I'm um, just sort of jumping straight in doing this because I had no idea if it's going to work or not. Um, but this works all right so far. So, now I will say you will need a floor tile, or maybe several. I unfortunately just have the one type, but I'll show you ways how you can customise it. Anyway, just for variety. And take some of your clay. Now I've seen people mix PVA glue with these, and a little bit of water. And my packet is quite damp really, so I don't even need to mix in water with it. Now this is an air drying clay, you don't need to blast it in a kill or anything, you just literally need to leave it overnight and that'll be rock solid. Um, take a good old lump of it, um, I'm just using an old glass, not an old glass, but just a glass, this stuff does wash off pretty easily, and I'm just going to roll it out. Now, there are better ways of doing this, obviously rolling it out this way, you might not get perfect, you might not be perfectly the same thickness, um, I eyeball it as much as I can, and to be fair, they haven't been too bad. 
I sort of go for roughly sort of 3mm thickness. Um, one thing you can, you can do, you could probably build a little box around this and just cast into it and get the same same sort of thickness of each one if you really want to do it perfectly. But um, for this, especially for doing like a doing the sump, um, I don't want them to be perfect either. And some of them are going to break up and add damage to, etc. But essentially, um, I've been you choose a side to cast this on. You can see I've been using this side, and you just push it down. I use my glass just to. And obviously be careful putting a lot of force on a glass, but you don't need to put on a great deal. Push it down, and then, with your craft knife, lift it up. And it gives you like the imprint there. Now it's not perfect in the middle, but I'm not too worried about the middle. It's this area here that I really want. Now, um, obviously the normal tiles have the outside raised rather than indented. Um, just how it is. I'm not too fast. Um, these are all just going to be part of one set that go together, so they'll match each other, and that's all what matters to me. If you really want them to match this, then um, I don't know. This, tu this tutorial won't help you there. Um, but there are other ways of casting stuff, of course. Um, but you wouldn't want to do a whole thing like this at a milli part of green stuff because you might as well just spend the money on the tiles. Um, but yeah, then what I do, take a metal ruler, and I like to leave just a couple of millimeters around the edge. But you don't have to. And then just with your knife, cut away like so. Hope you can see that okay. And remove the excess and go around. Obviously, try and get it as square as you can. Get your knife in. Remove the ex excess. And again, just going around. Same thing, all the way around. You don't want to do this after it dries. I mean, you could, but I really wouldn't want to. And then remove the excess. Now, you want to leave it on the plastic card whilst it dries. Um, you try and pull them off, you're going to stretch it, whatnot. Now, um, because this is an air drying clay, it does have moisture in it and it basically hardens when that moisture evaporates. There is a chance these could shrink slightly, they could even crack, um, all of that. For, for this, I think cracking is awesome, and none of mine have actually cracked, mind you. Um, I haven't had too much issue with shrink and shrinkage or anything like that. They will do a little bit. And they can warp, but whilst they're sort of drying on here, I found they haven't really. And um, yeah, I've made quite a few. Here's some I have made. You can see they're pretty solid. They need a little sort of neatening up around the edges, but that's easy enough to do once they're dry. You can literally just get your knife and just run it along, just neaten up any little edges. You could get your clippers in if you've got large chunks. And just like so, another one here. Now I haven't managed to get them all perfectly the same thickness. And you see there are some gaps as well, but I don't worry too much about that. Um, I'll show you later on how we can sort of mask any imperfections which will help in making it more interesting as well. The leftover clay can literally just go back in your packet. Obviously, you're going to make loads of these. And for one tile, you do need to make 36, I think. My maths is correct. I'm sure there's 6 by 6 which last time I checked um, was 36. So you do need a lot if you want to cover the whole tile in them, which is not what I'm going to do in this video. So this is, this is probably good for if you want like other stuff on your tiles. So yeah, I've got plenty of them here. Um, still not enough for what I need. But I've got plenty drying at the moment. Now, I did say there are ways to customise them also. So one thing you can do, um, these little pit bits from the Zone World Talus, they're quite cool. You can actually use them like a little stamp. Try and get it as perfectly centre as you can. And then push it down. And because it sort of sticks up on the end there, I don't think that's dead straight, mind you. You can sort of lift, get your clippers and just lift it up. Um, and then that gives you, like, the Necromunda sort of symbol in there, which I think is pretty cool. So, yeah, um, there's a lot more sort of customization options doing it this way than just buying one of the tiles. And they're very limited um, in their design. They also have... Um, certain areas for where like these columns and walls attach which I really don't like. Um, doing it this way you can literally put anything anywhere 
Um, I won't put nothing on there, but say we had a few of these tiles laid out. You know, your, your stuff's just going to go on wherever you want it. Um, in this video, I'm not going to worry about the terrain. It's literally just about the tiles. So, yeah, I'm babbling on quite a lot. So, yeah, um, I'm going to make as many of these as I can, use what I need, and then I'll show you how to make the rest of the tile. Okay, so the reason that I've shown you how to do the tiles first, um, if you are following this along, is so you can give them plenty of time to dry and then you can move on to doing other stuff in the meantime and um, one of the things is to take some pink foam and I'm going to sort of build build this tile up because obviously we want to have some depth to it where the sump will be and then all the tiles around it will be raised up and I'm probably going to do it sort of too high, I don't know what thickness this is actually, um, I'll grab my ruler, that doesn't really matter. Um, well, I'll just measure it anyway, it's about a centimetre. So, what's that about? Um, three quarters of an inch for our American friends. I'm probably going to double this up, because I want, I'd quite like to have some sort of pipes running into it, and the pipes, sort of roughly two centimetres, they're slightly bigger than two actually. Um, I'm sure I can cut some down. What have you? I'm all worked something out, but yeah, I'm gonna be raised up. So um, you can cut these on hot wire cutters and stuff, but I'm not gonna do that. Um, you can actually cut this so easy with a knife. So this is like just sort of pink foam board. A lot of crafters use it. Um, I can link in the description. I mean, I'll link in the description to everything I use for you for you guys. Some might be Amazon affiliate links. Just putting that out there, but. That all helps the channel. So what I want to do is sort of, it's hard to get it all on camera, but sort of line it up with your board. And I'm going to do thicknesses of these about two inches. And um, that's roughly how big our tiles are, they're two inch squares. So I want to do strips that run along two inches, and I'm going to put them around the edge. Um, so I just find it easier to match up tiles if they've got all the, um, these floor tiles around the edges. That makes sense. Um, you'll see how I've gone. Anyway, I'm babbling on so much, and this video is going to be so much longer than it probably needs to be. So yeah, what I'm going to do is sort of draw around, and then and then cut it out, and then I'll be back. So you can literally um, just cut it with one of these knives. Now I'm trimmed away to the size I want, and I'm just going in. And um, what well, roughly the size I want. I'm just going in um, two inches, as I said. I'm using just a metal ruler and get it as straight as you can. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then just run your knife across, watching your fingers. And that's almost the way through. I like to do it just in several passes rather than just really trying to go in. But once you're in, I'll cut nice and easy as long as you've got a nice sharp blade. Like I say, you can use hot wire cutter. Um, if you've got one of the hot wire sort of cutting tables, you can cut quite accurately. Um, but yeah, you just need several of these. and. They will go on there like so, obviously trim to length, with our tiles on top. But like, as I said, I'm going to double them up. Um, I've got a few tiles what I made earlier, that one's lost a bit of its corner. But yeah, so like that, it's hard to get it all on, sh all on shot. So yeah, I'll get all these cut up, and then we'll get them stuck down to a board. Um, another thing I didn't mention actually, with these MDF board, boards, some of you might be thinking, oh, they might warp, um, you would be correct. On the underside of them, I would suggest giving them a nice coat of PVA glue. That'll help. And just to combat any warpage. Okay, so I've cut up several strips of foam. And see, I've got some that are four inches across. And obviously, you can do like the two inch strip around. 
But and obviously when it comes to putting on like walls and stuff, they're gonna take up one of these sections. I've got um, wall pieces here, so you can see they sort of cover that, which obviously would then not give you much space to move around. So I thought I'll have a thicker piece in case I want to put any walls on there. I mean, in the regards of a piece I'm doing now, I'm probably not going to do a great deal of walls and stuff, but when you do avatars, you want to keep that in mind. So yeah, I've got, as you can see, loads of strips here. And as I said, I'm going to double them up. Now again, they're not perfect, but they will do. Don't worry about... Don't worry about, um, sort of imperfections and things like that. We'll sort all them out later. This one just needs to be chopped down to the right size, but I'll show you roughly what I'm planning on doing with them. So, they'll be like that. Um, I do need to just make some minor adjustments just to get them perfect. They're just sort of cut just roughly to shape at the moment. But they will go in like that, all glued together. As you can see, it'll be quite a tight fit when it's done, but it'll be something like that. And then in the middle, that will be a sort of sludgy sump. Now, because you don't have to do it perfectly square, um, I'm going to make some, I'm going to add some other little bits and pieces here as well to make it more visually interesting. I might do some little steps just sort of going down. And I want to have some debris in there as well, maybe even like a little sort of bridge going across with debris. Could go that way or probably diagonally, just be more interesting. But yeah, I'm going to stick all that down and then the tiles can go on at some point as well. I'll probably leave them until the end. So to glue it down, you could just use hot glue or you could even use PVA glue. I'm just going to use PVA glue. I'm not really too worried about how long it's going to take to dry because literally once I've done this, I probably won't be able to continue with this until tomorrow anyway. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And of course the PVA just gives me plenty of time to adjust it, make any little minor changes I need to to get everything lined up perfectly. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so another thing you can actually do while it's drying as well, um, what I'm doing on here is making some steps. So this is um, just, this is actually like a thin sort of underlay style sort of foam board, but you can just use it on a foam core or anything. Um, it's about one and a half mil, I think. Um, no, it needs more on that side. It's half of what the pink stuff is. Uh, one and a half, one idiot. Um, it's about four. That's four mil. Um, no, I got one and a half from. Anyway, it's half. It is basically half of what the pink is. And yeah, essentially, I'm just I've just cut. They're two inches across. And then um, the top one is actually a two by two square, just like a normal thing. So if I wanted to have a tile on it, I could. I might not. I might actually maybe just make a wooden. Decking on these stairs, but yeah, essentially, um, just started with that and then just gone slightly longer on each one. You see, they're not sort of perfect, but that doesn't matter. I'm gonna glue them together. Don't worry about how the edges are looking at the moment, we're gonna sort that out in the next step. And when it's dry, have something that looks like this. Now, um, you know, there's a few little gaps here and there. You won't notice them when we put all the floor on and stuff. Um, that one doesn't seem to be perfectly dry. Um, never mind. My next step is another step, which actually has a long drying time. This is optional. Um, as you can see here, we have. You can see where the two layers meet. You can on the outsides as well, but that's not really going to be like a plain area. So if you want to neaten up the outside, you can. Maybe stick some card over it. Or we'll not even do what I'm going to do now. Um, you could easily just stick strips of card around here to cover up these areas, or you can take some polyfiller, spackle, whatever and it's called where you are. Mix it with a little bit of water. I'm literally going to use my fingers here, and you'd have to use fingers. And you can literally sort of start putting it on. Maybe I'll get something better than my fingers to do this with, but cover up that whole area. That will dry nice and solid. It will protect the foam um, should you go to spray paint this, which I might do. Um, my fingers are probably not the best thing to use here. 
There we go, that's better. My thumb's better. You can go over like that. And um, yeah, if you put a thicker layer where needed. This is a terrible example. I really need some sort of spatula. Um, hang on. Let's get one of these. This probably needs a bit more water mixed in as well. That's bad, but you can go over the whole thing. And again, it's another step, what will take a long time to dry. So there's a lot of drying time here. I'm waiting for the clay pieces to dry, waiting for the PVA glue to dry, waiting for this to dry. But um, if you're making a few of these, you can do it over the course of a few days, maybe. And do other bits when other areas are drying, I think. There we go, we get some larger bits in. But yeah, I'm going to go around the whole thing. Doing this, it also gives that like, texture to the wall there as well. But as I said, thin strips of card or plastic card will cover that up as well. Or obviously, if you've used thicker card um, or thicker foam, sorry, then you won't even need to. Okay, so that's pretty much dry now. It dries in a few hours. And you can clean up little bits and pieces, not too bad. Any bits will sort of stick out, you can just sort of pick off quite easily. It doesn't look like much now, but once it's painted, I'll just add a nice little texture to this. I put some along the side of stuff, I don't know how well that's going to be, but it just makes it look less like it's laid up. Anyway, so now comes a nice stack of um, tiles. Now I think I've counted out enough here. So to glue them, um, first I would say it's just to lay them all out, but I think um, PVA might work. I don't know. Do I use hot glue? I've got this like Gorilla Wood glue, which is like a lot stronger than PVA. I'm going to try it. Um, I like to experiment on these videos so you guys don't have to. I just, I just get reluctant to use hot glue, because obviously the thickness of it. And you don't get a lot of time to work with it. Now you might get some overlap on the tiles like I have there. Um, these are, obviously, some of these shrunk more than others. You can see some weren't even as flat as others. And it's all about sort of picking the best ones. And really just take your time getting it all lined up and do all of them first before you start sticking anything down which is what I'm going to do um, got another pile over here so yeah I'm going to do that and then I'll start sticking them down okay so it's stuck down, they're still drying so I have no idea if this will be successful or not but um, first time done, too bad um, yeah, it wheels around a bit, but it seems to be bonding. Um, what you'll notice, if you don't know this way, I mean, if you make a perfect mould, you probably won't have any issues, but because um, some of these shrink and they're not perfect by any means, you might get the odd little gaps. Now, this one here actually has a corner broken off it. Um, I've sort of cleaned up the edges with the Dremel, which works quite well on this stuff, but um, if you catch it at the wrong angle, it will break it off, but I quite like that because I do want some sort of damage and stuff here. And if you do have some gaps and stuff like this, you can take your PVA glue. And what I'm going to do, I mean, I'll, I'll, even in fact, the gaps, I would probably do some of this anyway, just make it a little more interesting. And I'm going to sort of just, but you'll notice that my my bottle is <laughs> awful. I'm going to stick some in there. Um, that's probably a bit too much, but never mind. Uh, old brush, just to put, get that right in there. That's way too much. I'm going to take some of this and stick in some other areas. Stick some over there. And we'll have some in some random corners and stuff as well. over there. Now, um, it's probably, it probably would be better just once it out dry, but as I said, there's a lot of drying time involved in this, and 
make it as time friendly as possible. I'm going to do that. Now I'm just going to take, I've got some of this um, from the old base, base and set. I might as well do it as a little sort of gravel. gravel. You can take some sand and stuff. I'm going to pop that in. Now as these are still drying, I'm not going to shake off the excess or anything until it's all dry, but I'm going to pop this in some of these places. Again, just visually it's a little bit more interesting. It's some over there as well. And if you have other little pieces of debris or whatnot, now it does look a little bit uniform there, so maybe I'll um, do something about that as well. It's hard to say until it's all um, shaken off, but I'll probably add some other little bits and pieces. What I'll do is I'm going to dollop some of this into a palette and use the old brush to put some on. Maybe a little bit over there. And yeah, just really just put it wherever you want. You notice there's some bits around the edges here actually as well, which could probably do with some. And yeah, you can take um, other bits and pieces. Obviously, um, if you want to put some walls down, you don't want raise up the um, floor too much, excuse me, but yeah. So once again it's just a case of letting stuff dry, um, however there's still other bits and pieces I want to add to this which I can do while I'm, whilst I'm waiting for this to dry. So you can add some stuff into the sump, maybe some debris and such. I've chopped a plastic barrel in half, sort of um, diagonally down like that, so you have some sort of half sunken barrels like so. And I will neaten these up with uh, Dremel, but shall we just say it's um, a bit too late at night to do that at the moment. It's about half past midnight I'm filming this. Um, also, what I'd like to do is maybe have like something here with like some sort of ruined sort of debris and then something sunken in there that you miniatures could stand on. I'm thinking of possibly breaking up one of the Minotaurum containers, but I'm not sure if the whole container is worth vandalising just for that. I mean, of course I could use other pieces of it in other tiles, but for now I might just make something. Okay, so it is the season of excessive packaging and I have some of this sort of quite dense foam and I thought that could work as maybe some crates or boxes. Obviously um, I'll, I'll cover them with some card and um, I've got some like corrugated card stuff and then I can use some of these barricade pieces Sort of like so. Um, yeah, I've got the best angle of it here. I'm going to tilt this around. Sort of like so. And then maybe have, I might just have one of these doors. And then this piece should hopefully rest on top. And then it's somewhere for, you know, you can move on to. For example, that's for thought process anyway. So yeah, well, I mean, what I'm going to do is just take some pieces of card, cut them to shape, stick them over these things, and they can be glued in. And also, um, yeah, tomorrow I will um, just neaten them up, get them glued in, shake off the excess, and then there's just some. I might just get some like coffee stirrers and make sort of like wooden steps. I mean. Um, they do have like the concrete on the side, so I'm not 100% sure about them. I might actually just keep them like this and then just paint them up as concrete. I think I will do that actually. I might do some wooden ones um, on another tile, maybe we'll see. Maybe I'll keep them, just paint them as a concrete. And um, a slight texture on there. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do, and then I'll be ready for painting. Um, this video is running quite long, so I'll probably just... Um, talk over how it's painted and show you how to do 
like the sump water effect. Anyway, yeah, as I said, it's running on too long, so I'll be back once this is done. Okay, so we are back. It's a new day. Um, probably been working on this for about three or four days now. Um, it's a, a lot of it's drying time, a lot of it's that personally I haven't had a great deal of time to work on this. Um, it's, you could probably make a few of these in a weekend or a couple of weekends quite easily. But anyway, I digress. I've put in my little sort of containers, I've used some sort of corrugated card on now. I know it's like the gaps will look a bit ugly but I'm gonna add extra panels and stuff to cover them up once I start working on the walkway thingy. It's gonna sort of, as I said, it's gonna be sort of something like that. Have some other debris and stuff in. There's gonna be other pieces I'm gonna add to it as well. I haven't quite worked out, but it's gonna be something like that basically. And then your miniatures can sort of just stand on there if it's glued in. <laughs> um, but I'm not gonna glue these pieces on just yet. I'm gonna leave that to the end. So otherwise I'll just make paint and they're a little bit awkward. You see, I've put these in as well. I've gone with the um, Gorilla Wood Glue. It's solid, like these are just... Yeah, I'm not going to try and pull them off, but they've stuck down really well. So the Gorilla Wood Glue, definitely recommend. That's really strong stuff. Um, and the, I just use regular PVA on these, and these are just solid. Like, like, I cannot, like, even with my nails, I cannot pick these off. So I'm going to start using these on bases a lot more, because they are just solid. Well, one's come off out of all that. That's amazing. It's ready to be sprayed. Um, don't s try and not to spray onto the foam. You can put some sort of coating on there if you wanted to. I'm just going to try and sort of mask it off. I'm just going to end up painting it with like black acrylic. Um, but yeah, I'm going to spray this. I'm probably going to spray it brown. Um, mainly because I'm going to paint these in like a bone colour with like sort of and brown sort of like the base I've been using, I don't know have any examples with me, but if you've been on uh, Instagram and all that you'll see what sort of style I've been doing the tiles. So I think that's probably the best way to do and I'll do sort of metal around the edges, bone in the middle, sewagey green there and like concrete there and around the walls. That's the plan, but yeah we can get on to painting this now. Okay so I've sprayed it brown and um, that dried really quickly. Uh, I'm not going to lie, this is like touch dry after about five minutes. Um, I didn't realise as I was spraying it that this is still exposed foam on the steps. And so if you do have exposed foam you can spray them without them melting. Just, um, just do it for more of a distance and then shorter quick bursts. It's the propellant not the actual paint that melts them. So and sort of further, if you spray it further away, it won't be too bad. But I thought actually a little bit of texture would look quite cool on them. So there's a little bit going on there, but not a great deal. And as I said, I've kept the edges though. They are literally just going to be painted black acrylic just to tidy them up. So yeah, um, I thought I'd show you a couple of painting elements for this, but not a lot because as I said, this video is gone knows how long already. So yeah, um, we'll get into painting just a couple of little elements. So the first one is painting the tiles. So um, I've got the um, Arts Opus dry brush set here, if you can use any dry brush, but i um, taking some Ushabdi bone and essentially doing a heavy dry brush, focusing it around the centre, like so, leaving some of that brown around the outside. So I do it like that. So it's picking up some nice texture. It picks up some of the detail that we managed to cast. All this outside edge is going to be metal on all of them. Now you can do this as heavy or as soft as you like. And then afterwards, I'll probably work a little bit heavy on that one, um, I'll take some Wraith Bone and again do a dry brush there. This time focusing more on the centre. And it doesn't look much now, but once you get that metal border in, it does look quite nice. And you can go even lighter in the middle. I might even go like pure white in the middle of these. 
Um, it was a fairly heavy dry brush and it just sort of builds a little sort of gradient going towards the centre. So yeah, I'm going to go and do that on every tile. Then I'll paint the metal around the edge, give that a black wash. Also with these tiles as well, um, shouldn't do that. Um, I do give them a wash of Agrax after. I might actually give all the metal Agrax instead of none oil. So yeah, paint all the metal, do all these. Agrax over it all, brings it all together. They look okay. So yeah, be back once that's done. Okay, so this is what we have now. The tiles have been painted, as you can see. So yeah, um, you saw me use my um, dry brushing. Then I've painted lead belcher around the edges. Then I went over everything with a sort of watered down Agrax wash. And then I've used sort of watered down type of corrosion to make these sort of sort of oil spillage sort of stains just to sort of dirty up again because the sump is very dirty and um, I was considering even adding some blood effects on I might even come and do a little bit of rust on the metal as well also just use the black acrylic around the edge as you can see I need to get in with a little brush just to neaten it up but I just quickly went over with a um, with a large brush and yeah I just need to come in with a little brush do all the little details there I've painted some grey on here which I will maybe dry brush with a lighter grey just to get, get a bit of texture on there and yeah and then all that's left really is the sump itself and the pieces inside it so what I'm thinking of doing is using um, sort of primary colours for the barrels and the crates and then really dirtying them up just add a little bit of colour there and then we'll, uh, like a dark green for the sump so I'm going to get all these painted up and then I'll show you how I do the sump Okay guys, so we're almost there now. The pieces going on top of here, I'll paint separately and put them on at the end. But yeah, you see I've painted these up. I want to use like the primary colours for these and then sort of, they're quite dark and dirtied up. So they don't look too bright and then obviously I've gone with the green, the green for the sump. Literally the only thing left to do on here really before adding the final pieces is just to put some kind of water effects in there. Now I did have a big tub, sort of big bottle of water effects but I have no idea where it's gone. However I do have some of this stuff. This is um, called Triple Thick. It's a brush on gloss glaze but it does um, really good water effects because it's quite thick. Um, I haven't tried it on anything as large as this so I normally just use it on bases. So I'm hoping it'll go alright. And these are only small bottles as well so I'll be using a fair amount of this, a case of just sticking it on and spreading it about but I'm probably going to use most of this bottle just for this um, it's not going to be as thick as it's going in there um, but I'll spread it around with a brush, I'll try and get this cleaner brush and just spread that around, I don't want a massively thick layer, I just want to give sort of the illusion of um, sort of slimy sludgy water and um, it dries clear before any of you start panicking. Um, but it's very hard to sort of move around. I wonder if you can actually sort of just move it naturally. Yeah, it will go into... It will move about on its own. So, yeah, I'm going to do that. It's going to be very, very slow moving. I'll probably put a bit more in. And, yeah. And um, once that's dry, um, depending on how it looks, I'll either go back over it with a lighter green or just leave it how it is. And I'll add the final bits and we'll be done. So, yeah. Okay, and here's a final look at the tile with a little Dalak fella about. So I can try and get it all in. There we go. So, yeah, the triple thick wasn't too great over a large surface. It didn't... Well, I mean, it dried okay, but it looked a little bit cloudy and the bits that were clear made the green look a bit grey, so I sort of went over the green. It's hard to see on camera anyway, but um, there is a shine to it. If I hold it up to the light, you can sort of see the reflect sort of nature of it. Um, I'll probably come back in the future with like proper water effect over it, but it still looks pretty pretty cool. Um, sure the light's really hitting it in some areas though. I need to go in a bit more green there. But yeah, so that's the final tile, and you know, for scale, here's a little Dalac fella. You can go across these platforms here, if you so wish. So that's sort of mainly the purpose of that.
Um, I may come back and add a couple more pieces of debris in the in there. But, um, yeah, um, a lot of work. It took me about four, four or five days to do this. However, of course, if you are making a whole load of them, then because um, the majority of it has been dry in time, it takes a little while to make the push molds, but not massively. You could probably made all these in maybe about a couple of hours. So you could easily sit down with a film and get all them done and just make loads of them. I mean, well, I say that, I've actually got loads more that I made as well. So these ones probably took even less than that. So there's just a lot of drying time. But yeah, I'm really happy with how it's turned out. I'm definitely going to make some more. I'm, when I eventually get hold of some plastic GW ones, I'll paint them up the same way and then maybe have them on a raised base. Maybe just a couple of layers of foam or some... I've got a load of cork tiles as well I could use, I just, and then they can all be sort of lined up level with this, and you get quite a nice board going. Um, you will see these in action on our channel. We have an upcoming Necromunda campaign, which we're hoping to start around sort of February, March time. And um, we've got to get all our um, war bands together and just get a few practice games in. But yeah, really looking forward to that. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and how to make your own tile. Obviously there's loads of variations how you can do this, but hopefully it's giving you guys some good ideas at least. And yeah, I hope you like the final outcome. So all that's left to say is thank you so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, please do give it a like down below. I'll link all the materials I've used in the description down below. Some of the Amazon affiliate links, um, but you know, they help the channel at no extra cost to you, which is awesome. So yeah, um, like, subscribe, comment, and all that stuff, and I'll see you again in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, then please feel free to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. You can also click that bell icon to be notified when a new video has gone live on this channel. On the screen now are two more videos that you may wish to check out, and a link to our Patreon page also. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you again soon.